This is a fishing rod strapped to a drone, which is an attempt to take fishing mobility to the next level. I'm gonna show you how this thing was made, some failed and some successful attempts of how fish were caught. I haven't caught any big fish yet, but there's definitely potential. There are some electronic parts that makes it possible to reel the line in wirelessly with a push of a button and some 3D printed parts which can mount almost any standard fishing reel. Except for curiosity and the challenge of building something like this, it is something appealing about standing on land and be able to pick the exact spot you want to fish. And it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the lake. This project started off by me being amazed by the precision of my 3D printer when I was able to print this tiny hook so accurately. I had the idea that I should be able to make a bendable hook without a barb and attach it to a drone with some fishing line. If the fish is too strong, the hook will bend and release it. But if the fish is small enough for the drone to lift, the hook should keep its form and lift the fish up into the air. It seems like an elegant solution, but uh, a bit risky if the fish manages to swallow the hook. Uh, that's why I tried out some longer hooks as well. They should be harder for the fish to swallow. After testing a bunch of different hook designs and not getting a single fish, I realized that one of the problems is that the hooks are just not sharp enough. And if the thickness of the hook is reduced, uh, it just becomes too weak. I tried using a metal hook and the success rate increased drastically. So I left the idea of bendable hooks behind and they are now called custom earrings instead. Let's just mount a rod to the drone. For wireless communication we use two HC12 transceivers that have a longer range but a lower bit rate than a typical Wi-Fi module. Since it only needs to transfer enough data to trigger on and off commands, it should be fine. There's also less risk of interference from the built-in communication devices of the drone if we pick a module that's not too close to overlapping in the frequency domain. It comes with a spring antenna that can be soldered to the antenna pin. A limiting factor here is the weight so I chose the Arduino Nano as the microcontroller. The receiver that is mounted to the drone can be coupled to a stepper motor which is used to reel the line in. The stepper motor is slow and steady and has higher torque than some off-the-shelf DC motors I had laying around. The torque is so low that I could stop it with two fingers and the speed of it would just be too aggressive for its application. So, the software. This is what I would call the transmitter part and the receiver part. When the button is pressed on the transmitter part, the yellow LED is turned on and the transmitter sends a signal to the receiver that it is time to start the motor. That signal is also an indicator to turn this green LED on. The motor starts and after a chosen amount of turns, in this case 3, the motor stops and checks the memory if the button has been pressed again. If not, it makes another 3 turns. If the button has been pressed, the motor stops after 3 turns, turns the green LED off and the receiver module sends a signal to the transmitter indicating that the motor has uh, stopped and the yellow LED is turned off. Now that the electronics and software are working, it's time to solder all the components to two perf boards, which also reduce the weight slightly. This is uh, components of the transmitter that will be on the ground to control the reel. The final part of the electronics is to enable both the receiver side and transmitter to operate with one 9 volt battery each. To make that work I had to get rid of the LED on the receiver side 
and add capacitors between ground and VCC on the wireless modules. These are now ready to mount. There are a lot of 3D printed parts on the mount I had to make. I'm gonna try to explain what every part does as I assemble it. This was probably the part that needed most precision. Since we are replacing the hand reel, one of the ends has to fit into the polygon shaped hole in the reel and the other side has to fit in the motor. This was made to fit tightly and had to be hammered in. I tried not to hit too hard to avoid damaging the motor, which is why it took some time to get it in there. But it is such a tight fit that I don't need any glue for this part. The main structure is attached to the built-in mounting pins on the drone. The little box in the front uh, is made to hold the 9 volt battery and the electronics. The two longer extrusions are used as a separator for the battery and is a tight fit as well uh, as it needs to hold the battery in place. Most of the weight from all the parts will be at the rear of the drone so I chose to have the battery as far forward in the box as possible in an attempt to balance the weight more evenly. Each corner under the perf board has uh, four extrusions to lift up and prevent it from rubbing against the plastic. The driver board is turned upside down to take up less space. I made a small hole for the motor cables to go through the back. Then mount a lid to prevent the electronics from falling out. There is a small hole in the lid for the antenna to stick out from and it is uh, printed in transparent delay so that the red LED lights on the driver board can shine through it. The reel holder is two rounded rectangle shapes and can be tightened with a nut to hold the reel in place. I printed a thread with a 0.25mm uh, clearance and it is a, a really good fit. Originally I had uh, a design for two nuts, but one was more than enough to hold the reel in place. The motor is inserted on the side which I usually reel in the line by hand, which is uh, with my left hand. The mini rod is placed so that the line points to the center of the reel. This will provide similar tension from all rotation angles. Now we just have to make a knot to the bait lock, put the transmitter in its own uh, little box and it's ready for its maiden flight. <laughs> I'm amazed by how stable it is with all the parts weighing in at about 350 grams. What a time to be alive! The drone is able to handle sudden movements with a load. It just needs a few more finishing touches. Hello. Do you also like drones? This lid is exposed and needs a clip so it can be closed and the motor cables need some management since they are just hanging loosely. And with some spray paint on all the parts it is ready for another test flight on land before we put it above water. This time I started to test the reeling procedure and it seems to be able to hand the float, hook and uh, weight just fine. But when stress testing it with maximum load the whole device loosened from the drone at 6 to 700 grams of extra weight and fell to the ground. This caused the mini rod to break apart from the structure and the, I don't know what to call it but the thing for the motor to snap. However, there's a solution. Let's give it the good old shake and twist test. And uh, since everything else seems to be working fine, it's time to try it out for real over water. Countless hours of work about a thousand dollars worth of drone and even more on different parts all in the pursuit of a fish
It must be so strange to be abducted in this way. Be free, little one. Since I'm kind of new to this type of drone fishing, I haven't had time to test its limits by catching bigger fish. But it would be cool to try and fight a mackerel or any other fish around half a kilogram. But for now I have to move on to the next project. Thanks for watching.